a 300,000-year-old throwing stick from Schoningen, northern Germany, documents the evolution of human hunting. Now, the problem is with preservation. The poor preservation of Paleolithic sites rarely allows the recovery of wooden artifacts, which served as key tools in the arsenal of early hunters. In this paper, the discovery of wooden throwing sticks from the middle Pleistocene open air site of Schoeningen that expands the range of Paleolithic weaponry and establishes that late lower Paleolithic hominids in Northern Europe were highly effective hunters with a wide array of wooden weapons that are rarely preserved in the archeological record. Now the German site of Schoeningen preserves rare examples of Paleolithic wooden artifacts. Here, a 300,000 year old spruce wood implement is interpreted as a throwing stick on the basis of microscopic use wear analysis. Now, the Paleolithic locality of Schoeningen in northern Germany contains many archaeological sites that date to the Middle Pleistocene and is well known for its exceptional preservation. Vast sedimentary profiles of tertiary and Pleistocene deposits have been exposed by decades of open cast lignite mining. Ongoing fieldwork since 1994 has documented 20 archaeological sites from the Reinsdorf Interglacial, a period dating to around 300,000 years ago and correlating with marine isotope stage 9. Now the new throwing stick find, find ID 28108, originates from the best known of the sites, and that's Schoeningen 13-2. Rapid sediment sedimentation buried the find horizon on the shore of a lake that formed when the northward retreat of the Alsterian ice sheet left behind a depression that served as a water trap. Since the time when hominids used the lake shore for hunting and butchering, the remains and deposits have been continuously waterlogged and anoxic, fostering outstanding preservation. Conservat Lagerstadt. Now let's take a look at one of these finds. It's December 7, 2016 in Schöningen. Uh, we've had the good fortune of uh, discovering what looks very much like a wooden artifact. You can see it's lying here, slightly inclined toward the north, going down toward the north. Uh, the complete piece would be approximately 80, uh, 68 centimeters long. It's worked to a point in the front and in the back. Uh, is a few centimeters thick in the middle, very reminiscent of the first wooden artifact found by Hartmutima's excavation in 1994. Uh, the difference is this one is a bit uh, finer and a bit shorter. The other one was about uh, 78 centimeters long. It's a great find and in all likelihood uh, will turn out to be an important artifact, the first wooden tool we found here in a number of years and the best preserved and... Uh Really a very good thing for the excavation and suggests that future excavations here at Schoeningen will also be able to, well, build on the earlier work by Hartmut Thieme and uh, Schoeningen remains probably the most important site for this kind of thing, wooden preservation, one of the most important lower Paleolithic sites anywhere in the world and uh, fabulous day for the Schoeningen team. Indeed. Indeed a fabulous day for the Schoeningen team. Now, a paper coming out around the same time seek to understand if what these actual tools did. 
Are they stabbing spears? Are they throwing spears? And here's the paper. External ballistics of Pleistocene hand-thrown spears. Experimental performance data and implications for human evolution. Now, as recent as 2019, it was uncertain what the spears were used for. Now, wooden spears made by middle Pleistocene Homo humans were either early Neanderthals or perhaps Homo heidelbergensis. In either likelihood, they had a function and purpose. However, it remained unclear whether the tools were used as weapons for self-defense or for hunting, either as thrust or thrown spears, or in all of these ways. Now, some of the Shonigan spears were probably designed for self-defense. It's just logical. Against predators such as the saber-toothed cats that are well known from the site. As well as for use as thrusting weapons for hunting. However, due to the design of a number of the Shonigan spears, the possibility that they were thrown, first proposed by Harmatium, remained strong. Small experimental studies had already shown that they were capable of flight and of wounding an animal when thrown. But velocity measurements related only to extremely close distances. The ballistics and accuracy of these spears at longer distances remain unresolved. And the ability to use them to hunt large animals, such as horses butchered at Shonigan, which you're looking at here, a horse head right next to a spear in situ. How amazing is that? So the ability to even use these spears to hunt horses was unclear. But they were shown in close proximity here. Now, many researchers, some on the basis of simple anecdotal evidence, continue to propose that the middle Pleistocene spears were unlikely to be effective when thrown. Suggestions included that they were too heavy for flight, would rapidly lose velocity in flight, and would impact with low energy. How did these prevailing characterizations of their inefficiency square with the small body of existing studies and with the ethnographic evidence of throwing at a variety of distances against a range of prey. Would current estimates of just five to 10 meters of effective distance for hand-thrown spears be borne out in the study when used by skilled throwers like Olympic javeliners? Or would they fly at all at great distances and would impact velocity decrease by distance? All these questions were answered. And they used javelin professionals to test the models. So what they made was replicas of all of the Shonigan spears. They took professional spear chuckers out into the field and they published a paper in January 25th of 2019. Well, and they explored the questions and came to some impressive as well as disheartening conclusions. The first thing we want to go over is some of the spears. Here you can see a rather small spear, which is about, which is less than a meter and thicker and pointy on both sides. And here is that similar type spear restored and in a museum. And again, a longer bowed spear. These are a different set of spears that are two meters and they're all crooked. And there has to be a good reason for them being crooked in my opinion. And even some of the smaller spears show bowing, which means they could be thrown because 
analysis of how you have to throw a spear shows a parabolic arc. And the curvature helps with that arc, keeping it straight upon impact. Very important to feeding your family in the Pleistocene. Now the paper concludes, unfortunately, that the accuracy for throwing these weapons at great distance was less than 40%. In fact, it came in at about 33%. But in my opinion, that's unimportant because what they left out is that hunting, hunter-gatherers 300,000 years ago were probably hunting in packs, later mimicked by wolves. And I believe that wolves learned their hunting skills from humans, from watching them for tens, if not hundreds of thousands of years. And 300,000 years ago, I'm pretty sure that the hominids of this time well understood that if 10 of them got together and threw spears at the prey, well, three or four would hit and they would be, well, feasting. The video you're about to witness is testament to the accuracy of these Pleistocene masters. Whether it be Heidelbergensis or Neanderthal, or another species unknown. It doesn't matter. These artifacts exist and they were used almost a half a million years ago by humans, hominids, just like us. You be the judge. Now this shot is from 20 meters, a parabolic throw from an expert javelinist. But I'm quite certain that those hominids 300,000 years ago were just as good. And if 10 of them were throwing these objects at, let's say, a saber tooth or a horse or even an elephant, well, the results would be, well, quite productive. In my opinion, what say you? Leave a comment below. Now, what can we say about the sustainable human population density in Western Europe between 560,000 and 360,000 years ago? Well, it was the beginning of the modern ice age, which is catastrophically peppered with cosmic catastrophe. And we're looking at some of that data here. This is the ice core data, which goes back about 430,000 years from now and includes the Schoenenberg spears here at 300,000 at this interglacial warm, this spike right here. Something happened during this spike, which allowed humans to gain a, a, a foothold, an advantage in hunting. And each of these peaks are called interglacials, where civilization rises and falls and dies. This is the cosmic catastrophe that kills the civilization born on the other end which builds during the Ice Age. The last advanced civilization was built here and destroyed here during this uptick. And again here during this uptick. And every other rapid rise in temperature on Earth has killed the civilizations on our planet. And if we go back to the Schoenenberg, there was a civilization before that that was probably more impressive. And again, and again, and again. Five per 100,000 year package of cosmic catastrophe. And we call this an eccentricity cycle, and each of the peaks a processional cycle. Five per 100. One, two, three, four, five. 
and we're on the second cycle, which is a bad one here. It's the sea level fall cycle where the empire ends, civilization ends, and we rebuild. We rebuild the entire time before there's a next uplift, which eliminates everything, and then we fall back down the curve, rebuilding and eliminating, rebuilding, destroying, rebuilding, destroying, rebuilding, destroying, rebuilding, destroying. Rebuilding, destroying. Do you see how we haven't gotten a foothold? Rebuilding, destroying. These are called solar-induced dark ages. Rebuilding, destroying. This is the greatest solar-induced dark age we've seen, the Younger Dryas event, 11,900 years ago. And we've been rebuilding since then. 6,000 years ago, we learned farming again. 8,000 years ago, we began building cities. And here we are today. It's about to all come to an end. Will we learn anything from the past? It's anyone's guess. Did you learn something from this video? I hope so. We love each and every one of you. The key here is to understand the facts yourself, not from what anyone else says. Digest them and come up with your own conclusions, period. Science is not proven. It's not settled. It never has been. The fact that the mainstream media and governments worldwide are claiming the science is settled on anything, well, what you should understand is that they're lying 100%. And I can prove it to you because that's not the definition of science. Science will never be settled. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom to knowledge. Mm.